just can't see the dream you off my mind. And it's the home get on the women. Give me, give me, give me the honky tonk. Hey there friends, how's it going today? David Potts here with Song Notes, and I'm excited to bring you a lesson for Country Honk by the Rolling Stones. Now, if you don't know this song by name, uh, it's basically Honky Tonk Women, quite literally. It's just their more acoustic, countrified version of that same song. They recorded it for Let It Bleed. We are in standard tuning here, no open G, and we're on an acoustic guitar, okay? So let's kick this one off looking at the chords we're gonna need and uh, walk through the verse and the chorus sections with a really simple strum, right? This is gonna give us the lay of the land and then all the riffs and fills and fancy stuff we add later on are going to be piled on top of this. But start with this, especially if you're just getting started or you're earlier in your guitar journey and you'll be in good shape, okay? So the four chords we're going to need are going to be our G chord, our D7 chord, we'll need a C chord, and then we will need an A7 chord. I think the easiest way to play it is just open, second, open, second, open, right? Whether you use your index and middle or your middle and ring, it doesn't really matter, right? The one thing I'll say though for the G chord is I do recommend, uh, if, you're, if you're not sure how to, to put your fingers down, try it out with your ring finger and middle on the thickest two strings. The reason why is when you go to that C chord, it makes it a really easy transition for these two fingers, right? See how they're just moving one string each? It's gonna make it really convenient for us. And then likewise, when we go from the G to the D7, our index finger is kind of already hanging out in this area up here. It's where it has to go for the C, right? See that D7? From C to D7, nice easy switch. So anyway, that's the G, I recommend doing it. And later on when we get to the, right? When we get to that Keith Richards riff, it's gonna really sort of benefit um, from you doing that same position. That's what he's doing when he plays actually. So that's my recommendation there. So those are the chords. If you need help with those, uh, sit, check out my chord guide over on the Song Notes website. But let's look at the verse and the chorus, big picture. Um, the way I have it written up here is every time you see a chord written above the lyrics, you're gonna play that chord for one measure, which is four counts, right? Four beats. So whether you're playing fast or slow, you just wanna get your tempo established, right? One, two, three, four. One, two, three. I'm sitting in a bar, tipple in a jar in Jackson. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And on the street, the summer sun is shining. One, two, three, four. There's many a barroom queen. You get the idea there, right? Start off by doing a single strum for each chord if you're getting started with things. You could even amp it up a little bit by doing a strum on the one count and the three count. Another way to say that is do two strums for each chord, but you want to keep the strums coming at a steady, regular sort of cadence, right? So that would sound like this. There's many a barroom queen I've had in Jackson. Three, four, one, two, three. But I just can't seem to drink you off my mind, right? And if you're playing along with my jam track over on my website, you can let the jam track do the work. You just kind of do those strums on the one and the three. It's going to sound like you're playing with the band, okay? The chorus, same thing. It's just G and D7, though. Real straightforward, right? It's the home on women. Okay, we're going to do the riff here a little bit later. Give me, give me, give me the honky tongue blues. Okay? What I've played for you right there, that verse and that chorus, that's the chord progression. That's all you need for the entire song. The instrumental, the intro, they're all going to use what we learned in the verse there. We're just going to play it without any words, and uh, that's what we need. Now, a couple ways to strum this. One way to do it is to use what I'm calling just a folk or a rock pattern, which is going to be this down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and okay? You want to get comfortable with that, that, that strumming pattern, be able to do it without worrying about chords at all. You could even put the song on, put the jam track on, and just sort of be able to keep up like this, right? Don't worry about the chords, just sort of get used to staying in that groove, right? And we could play through things like that, it would sound like this, right? Uh, I play the divorcee in New York City I had to put up some kind of fire yeah. Okay, this is one way to do it. 
Another way, though, you might find some uh, satisfaction with is using bass note strums, right? So this is going to be a bass down, bass up down, a bass down, bass up down, a bass down, bass up down, a bass down. It would sound like this, right? I'm a sitting in a bar, tipple in a jar in my Jackson. I always want to say Austin right there, right? Bass down, bass up down, a bass down, bass up down, a bass down. Bass up down, a bass down, bass up down. Many a barroom queen I've had in Jackson, but I just can't seem to drink you off my mind. Okay. I find that bass note strum, especially on the one count and or, and or the one and the three count, is really going to sort of establish the sort of the, the, the lower end of things, and it's a real kind of country rock sound you're going to find in lots of songs. And you can be loose with it too. You can modify that strumming pattern, use bass note strums however you want. The final strum that I'll also show you, and I want you to keep this in mind as we get later on into this lesson, is basically just sort of a constant down and up strums, where you're basically going to just keep your pick moving like this on uh, on the strings for every down and up strum, okay? But the key to making this work is you have to really uh, get good at using less. Less is more when it comes to those strums. Because if you're kind of doing, right, if you're doing this, it's gonna sound like too much, right? It's like you're taking a crayon and you're just doing full, uh, not volume, but you're pushing on, on the crayon full like force on the page and it's gonna lack that shading, lack that sort, of, that sort of dynamics, right? So the way to approach this I would recommend is you kind of, What I'm doing here is I'm sort of favoring the thickest three or four strings of every chord that I'm strumming, and I'm keeping it light and brushy. But on the two count and on the four count, I'm gonna do a big beefy full strum, okay? That's gonna give the, the, the one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And that would sound like this if we put it all together. It's the honk, it's on the women. Gimme, gimme, gimme the honky tonk blues. And this is gonna work really well when we get to that bass line strum, right? Okay, that's the exact strum I'm using there. I'll get to that bass line riff in a little bit, but those are the strumming patterns, right? Practice them all. You can look up some other ones as well and bring your own if you like, right? There's no one right way to strum any song in my opinion. I think, you know, bring with it something that works well for you, but I think these will get you started and uh, have you feeling good, I hope. Okay, so from there, let's look at some of the fun stuff that we can use to spice this thing up. The first thing is gonna be this really amazingly fun riff you hear. Okay? It's played over the G major chord. It sounds really bluesy, and I think the secret here, I'm not gonna get too much into the, the music theory and everything, but you're adding in this, this flat seventh, which is not in the major scale, in the G major scale, right? And in this note, this is the flat third, the minor third. This is not in the G major scale either. So when you're mixing a minor third just before this, G major chord is playing, which uses the major third, it kind of creates this just clash, which is really emblematic of the blues overall, okay? If you want to go deeper with this, I did a separate video which looks exclusively at this riff. It breaks it down step by step. It's lesson 499 over at songnotes.net. I'll put the link in the description. Uh, check that out because it, it'll really sort of walk you through things. The, the way I would describe it though is number one, I would recommend using your ring finger on that low uh, E string, third fret for the G. Okay? And use your pinky up here on the uh, third fret of the thinnest string. Now when it comes to playing this riff, we're going to start off by doing basically a low E string, just single pluck of the bass note, right? That, that's why that bass note strum that I brought up is a bit handy to have in your bag, right? Bass, down, up, down, up. And when we do a down, up, down, up, we're just going to be on the thinnest three or four strings. You don't need to do all six strings. Okay? Get used to that first. Get used to this G position. I'm not even pushing down the fifth string. Number one, because we're not gonna play it, right? We're just doing the bass note and then the thinnest three or four strings. And number two, because this finger is muting it, so it's not gonna make a sound anyway, right? Now, the rest of the riff here, you see these blue notes that are highlighted. 
Okay, that is the main melody. And you're gonna to wanna to learn those highlighted notes first because even though we can add in some sort of filler strings later on, just be a bit sloppy with our strumming in a way where those, those other notes are included, it's gonna sound more full and big and kind of sloppy in a cool way. Learn the main melody first, right? Learn that phrase first. On the thinnest string, third fret, third fret, first fret, open, and then second string, third fret, okay? Take your time, take it slow, memorize that pattern or write it down. Just practice getting your fingers used to that, right? Okay, once you have that in your bag or sort of you're semi comfortable with it, you can mix it up by then practicing the second half, which is gonna go from that same starting note, then play the open thinnest string, right? Then we're gonna jump our pinky to the third fret of the third string and then take it off, okay? So your left pinky here is doing a lot of work. It's starting off on the thinnest string. Okay, third fret. It's going to that second string, third fret. Then it's going to the third string, third fret, right? I, I can't think of a riff that's so efficiently uh, written, very few notes relatively. It sounds really cool and your pinky is doing so much of the work, okay? But it's worth practicing, so. Okay. Once you get a handle on that, take it slow, practice doing it in sequence. And what I mean by that is you do the riff and then you come back to a G chord and then you do the riff again. I'll play it a few times. Let me show you what it should sound like when you're kind of getting over the hump and working on it a little bit, right? See how the riff ends and I go right back to this low uh, E string third fret? You're gonna wanna do that anyway, even if you're playing the full song because you're gonna get back to your strumming immediately after the riff, okay? The last thing I'll say about this riff uh, is you, it's okay when you're playing um, those blue sort of highlighted notes, it's okay if you include any of the strings that are next to that note. And here's what I mean by that. See in the tab, uh, I have in the first, you know, bass, down, up, down, up, right? And then under all those blue notes, there's like one or two notes maybe that's that's written like an open string, right? Open uh, second or third string, but it's not highlighted. Those are sort of filler notes. It's okay to include them, but you wanna make sure you don't strum past the blue note, right? For example, on this note, this is a D note, this third fret of the second string. You don't wanna strum the thinnest string, right? It's gonna really mess up the vibe of things. And then likewise, that third fret to open, it's okay if you get the fourth string open in there too. But just don't strum past this note. You want this to be the highest in pitch note you play. Okay? So that's one thing to keep in mind. You can sort of fill out and, and uh, add some depth to your riff if you keep that in mind. Now there is a second version of the riff I have tabbed right next to it. It's the exact same thing. The only difference is the last three notes, right? Actually it's open, third string, and then third fret, third string, and then second fret, third string, right? So that riff would sound like this. So I don't, personally, I don't like this second version as much because adding from that third fret note to that second fret note, um, after that, I, I kind of feel like you're in no man's land up here. I really much prefer going from third fret to open and then getting your full strum of the G chord on, okay? Watch Keith Richards play it though. It sounds like he's doing it slightly different or he's mixing and muddying it up all the time, right? So don't approach this as canon. There's only one right way to play it. At least that's not how I approach things. So. That's how you play the riff. Now, uh, you're gonna use this in the intro. You're gonna use this at the end of the verse. You're gonna use this at the end of each line of the chorus, okay? 
Um, and so basically throughout the song, this riff is a real fixture. And you're gonna wanna work on your chords, the progression, the strumming, this riff. And after some time, you give it some practice, you're gonna be able to sort of jump into this riff. And if you're singing along, you know, you'll be able to put it all together, but it's gonna take time. Okay, so be patient, work on the riff in isolation sometimes, go through it slow and considered, slow it down until you're able to play it perfectly, and then you can bring in the other stuff and uh, put it all together and sound, sound good, right? Now, what else can we look at here that sounds really good? Uh, one thing is this sort of bass line or melody riff, right? You hear Keith Richards play this in the album, recorded version, right? But you also, uh, if you listen to the 2016 backstage version, you can see him doing it, okay? And it's gonna sound like this, right? Okay, so really it's that bass line part that's the, that's the real deal. It's gonna end with the G riff that we just learned, okay? So the main idea of this, this riff, it's kind of like this one pattern we're doing over G and C. Once you get a hang of it, it's kind of easy to understand what you have to do, but then it's gonna take, if you're like me, it's gonna take you a while to kind of get comfortable doing this. I always have to remind myself to start, put my ring finger down here and all that stuff. So here's how I would recommend practicing this, right? First. Finger position really matters here. So I'm only looking at the, the G major chord. I'm looking at the thickest three strings, right? Third, second, open. The highlighted notes here are what matters, right? So what, what's gonna happen is we're gonna start off in a regular position. Then we're gonna take off our middle finger and put the middle finger back. Then you're gonna add your pinky, okay? And if you strummed all three of those strings, And repeat it right like a cycle and what's gonna happen is for the C major chord we're gonna do the exact same thing just move these two fingers down or I guess thinner one string each right Now, I was kind of sloppy. I didn't have my index finger down. You can put your index finger down for the C. That way, if you accidentally hit the second string, it's not gonna make an un, uh, unexpected, bad sounding noise, right? But you really wanna focus on the thickest uh, two or three strings of the chords, of the G and C chords. You don't want this to be too, too heavy, right? That, that's my advice at least, right? When you look at the full tab, you're gonna notice that the, the main rhythm sequence kind of follows the same kind of sequence, right? But at the end, we're gonna kind of hover on that, that those fifth string notes, right? So when you're learning the notes of this, if you want, you can just do the highlighted notes by themselves. That would sound like this. And then same for the C. It's the exact same sequence. Everything is just one string thinner, right? And we go back to the G. And then we're gonna jump up to the fourth string and either do a D7 or a D. And then you're gonna get that second fret of the, the low E string in there. But forget the D for now, because that's we can fudge that easier. The, the way I would recommend approaching this is you can either use all down strums, right? Or you can do down and up strums alternating. That's what Keith Richards does. I'm fairly certain from watching him play it, right? Okay, to me, it's really hard to get this to sound smooth and good. Keith Richards is, he's Keith Richards, right? I mean, he kind of has a, just a touch in the tone and everything that's great. So. Be patient, be kind with yourself. I don't really do this when I'm singing. I like to just include this in a little instrumental thing or maybe in the, in the intro if I'm really getting into it. But um, that's the main idea there, right? Now, after, at the end of the G, we're gonna go to a D or a D7. Oh, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and... 
okay? So that's gonna be uh, that main riff there. Here's what I'll say. This is kind of maddening. If you listen to the album version of this song from the Stones, it sounds like they're missing an eighth note or it might be a quarter note. Like, and it's particularly when he goes from the G to the D. It's like things skip ahead of beat. I don't know if it's on purpose or they just mixed two different takes together. I don't know. But uh, it sounds like what I would consider a mistake. So when I play it, the way I've written it up is I am just keep keeping the counting four beats for every single measure. I'm not getting rid of any eighth notes or quarter notes. I'll leave that to Keith, he's the man. Um, so here's what it would sound like if you put it all together, okay? Okay, that's how you play that part. It's tricky, but give it some time and be patient with yourself, and I'm sure you'll get there. Uh, a couple other things I want to show you really quick. There's a fun riff we can do when we're on the G. We go to the A7. Little walk down. Okay, and that D7 little riff and I was do that, doing here. There's basically two parts of this. First of all, understand the context, okay? This is happening in the four measures that are in the verse, but also in the instrumental, right? I can't really sing and do the A7 walk down at the same time, but during the instrumental, if you're playing by yourself, this is a great place to do that, right? So it's, this is between that measure of G, A7, and then D7, which is for two measures. So for context, that's where this is happening, right? Now, I'm not showing every single strum here of the G. Bring your own strumming pattern. I'm not gonna tell you how to do that. I've already given you some options, right? But the main idea here is bass note strum on the G, then, bass note strum on the A7. Okay, the main thing here is that A7, whether you do an A7 like this, or you add the third fret of the high E string, it doesn't matter if you add that pinky or not. The main thing is this bass walk down. Okay, fourth string, going from second to first to open, okay? The tricky part about this is you're landing on the D root note, the open fourth string, just before the one count. So it's gonna sound like you're arriving, it's like D7 is showing up for the party early, right? Usually you're gonna do the bass note of a chord on the one count because it's just a very clean way of announcing a chord's arrival. But here, that, that D note is happening on the four and count. So, when you're playing it, it might sound weird because your, your hand doesn't know what to do, but you kind of have to just practice it enough that you can keep the time and then get to the D7 part. I'll, I'll play it all, I'll put it all together for you in a second, but let me show you the D7 here. You know your D7, and this would work for a D also. Same thing. The main idea here is we're just gonna remove the second fret note on the thinnest string, put it back, and then add our pinky on the thinnest string, third fret, and then take that away. So you basically get this, right? I wrote up a sort of rhythmic figure here in the tab you could follow, right? Uh, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. You can follow that if you want to, but you also could just do it however you want. You could do it. Okay, that's a real like Guns N' Roses patient sort of rhythm there. I'm sure lots of other songs use that as well. Let me put all this together for you and show, show you how it sounds, okay? So I'm gonna do two measures of G, two measures of C, then I'm gonna go to this sequence I just taught you. Then I'm gonna to return to the second line of the instrumental, okay? Right, so.
really good stuff. Um, what a what a joy of a song. So all this is in my song sheet, guys. It's three pages. Um, it gives you everything I've showed you here. Okay, so if you want to get it, if you want something to follow along with, it's print friendly, so you don't have to take screenshots of YouTube and all that sort of thing. Um, my song sheet is it. I spend many hours on these. Real, real true labor of love. You don't have to buy them, right? But if you do want to get them, uh, they are available and, and uh, you know, you can follow along, keep them in your notebook of songs and everything and, and play along without having to follow a glowing screen. So um, find out the links in the description. You can find out more about my song sheets if you want to save 50% on all of them. Um, members on my website, songnotes.net, get a coupon code that you can use when you buy them. The song sheets are available on a separate site who does licensing and everything. I can't uh, mess with the copyright stuff, so that's handled separately. But songnotes.net is my site. That's where you'll find uh, all my other lessons, right? I'll do a playthrough of this that's there. Maybe I'll clip out some of these um, uh, riffs and everything if you want something to study. And also there's a backing track that I made when I taught the original riff for this. You can use it for this song. Really handy to practice with. You also check that out. Uh, membership is supported. Um, membership is really appreciated. Even if you only join for a month or two, um, I trust you'll enjoy the, the huge library of lessons I have, right? Uh, tons of video lessons, extended video lessons. I'm building out some courses and uh, jam tracks, extended, extended stuff. It's all there for you. And it's all made by me. Songnotes.net is 100% my creation, and it's just my sort of life's uh, project that's turning into of, of sharing the songs I love. So thanks for watching, everybody. A uh, long one here, perhaps, but um, great song. Lots of requests for this one, and I'm truly happy to share it with you. So uh, good luck with it, and let me know how it goes. I'll see you in the next one, and until then, my friends, take care. Bye-bye.